Welcome to SWK's video series on Sage 100. This video is going to show you some of the new options in Accounts Payable for version 2020. We're going to start out with a new feature in Accounts Payable Options. Under the Additional tab, we now have Number of Months to Retain in, uh, Paid Invoices. This goes up to 9,999 months. And you can also choose when those invoices will be purged. Is it at period end or at year end? This is a little different from when uh, in prior versions where we had up to 999 days and you were not able to choose when the invoices would be removed. Set that when you when you upgrade make sure you uh, take a peek at that uh, set that to what works well for your business. The next thing we're going to look at is vendor maintenance. There's several nice changes in here that I think are worth looking at. Uh, the first thing that we have is when we're looking at tabs uh, 6, 7, 8, and 9, there's a new icon that I think you'll like. If I click on any line item, it doesn't matter what, you'll see that there is a new Excel icon. If I click on this, we're going to see that everything that's within this panel is now uh, exported, to, exported to Excel, and quite nicely, I think. Uh, we see that same icon in Transactions. Here's the icon under Checks and under Purchase Orders. So whatever is uh, in the panel is what will be exported. The next thing that we have that I think is important is uh, Sage 100 is now compliant with the new 1099 NEC, Non-Employee Compensation. You can still, when you uh, select your default, you could do the miscellaneous form, but check with um, either your accountant or go onto the IRS's website to see the different uses now for the um, 1099-MISC versus the 1099-NEC. With this, um, I could still choose the box, and if I was using a standard uh, 1099 miss, I would be able to uh, check this box if that was needed. Otherwise, running 1099s is going to be pretty much the same. One other change that you should be aware of is when, if you were using paperless office to deliver copies of checks or remittance advice, if you were using ACH payments, there was a paperless office button here. And that has now been moved over to the more button. And here is your paperless delivery options. There's also a nice utility in um, uh, in. Uh, accounts payable that allows you to reverse an entire check run. You could do it one of two ways. You can either choose a check based on the bank code or you could choose it by the source journal. I'm going to look at bank code D and I could choose any check that is has been issued from bank code D and it will return all of the checks that were done on that check run. If one of the checks had already been reversed, it will alert you that it will not be reversed a second time. If I click on Proceed, it is going to go through the utility, and I need to change my date here real quick. Uh, and let's go ahead and print this. And what's going to happen, it's going to put in the invoices back onto the vendor's account so that you can re, uh, repay them because it is allowing you to reverse the entire check run. And you could just get a little uh, hint over here of what the register looks like. And it is putting the invoices back onto the vendor's file. There is one other thing that I think is useful inside of uh, this new feature, and that is being able to remove the personally identifiable information on a vendor. I'm going over to my vendor, uh, Touche Waterhouse, and let's say this vendor calls me up and says, I want to have you remove all my personal identification, meaning name and addresses and phone numbers. What I do is I simply come to the vendor status on the additional tab. I click in active, 
It's warning me that I have open invoices or a current balance, but it's still allowing me to move forward. If I had open purchase orders, that would be different. It would then ask me to remove the purchase orders before it would allow me to make the vendor inactive. I'm going to say yes, and you'll see I have a new icon. And if I click on this icon, it's warning me that it's going to encrypt the personal identifiable information. In doing so, I'm going to save the changes, and you'll see that the name is no longer visible, and when I come over to main, the address is no longer here. There is one thing that's important to note. Because there was an open invoice, I could still pay that invoice. The vendor's name and address will appear on the check, but that's the only place that you're going to see the vendor's name and address. If I would run an aging report, only the vendor number is going to show up. Same with all the other reports. Now, let's say that I need to do some more business with this vendor. I could simply come in here, activate the vendor. It's giving me a warning. I'm going to say yes, and you will see that the vendor's name and the address information has now been restored. Give these all a try when you upgrade to version 2020. I think you'll find them useful. Thanks for watching our video.